My name is Rachel from Life of Little Greener and today we're going to talk about cover cropping. So today we're at Raven Place Farm which is a micro regenerative farm here in the Northern Rivers on Clothiers Creek Road and so what you can see behind me is an area that we've been working on and so if you have a, an area of lawn such as this that you're not currently doing anything with and you'd like to do your part to help improve um, soil fertility, increase carbon sequestration, this is a really simple and cost effective way of doing that. So what we've done is we've ran a multi-species cover crop through the space. We've tied it in with rain. So we've been appreciative of the weather and tying it in so that we know that it's going to rain one to two days prior to putting the seed out. And so we've mowed the entire lawn where we're going to run the cover crop and we've run it nice and low so that we can then aerate the space. So what we're trying to do is open up those soils and allow for some root depth penetration to occur so that some seeds can try and germinate. And so once we've done the aeration, we've then gone through with a hand broadcaster and we push that up and down the hill and that's put the seed out. The cover crop's been in now for maybe eight weeks. And so some patches are doing really well and other patches you can tell it's probably a bit more compact. Something that's really special about this cover crop is that it is a multi-species cover crop, meaning that it does contain more than one species within that planting to allow for different plants to provide different functions. If you wanted to come with me, we'll go for a walk through the cover crop and we can talk a bit about the different species that we've planted and their role within that cover crop. And I haven't removed any of the weed species from the cover crop, we've just left those there um, because they're still adding that biodiversity to the space. This is in a not so developed patch. Um, we've got things like sunflower, buckwheat, uh, flaxseed, pea, um, and then there's some waxweed coming through as well. So we've left that because it's all going to add to that biodiversity. This is a really beautiful patch right here. So you can see that there's a lot of different things growing. So we've got some clover here. So clover is a nitrogen fixer. So that's going to help fix some nitrogen in the soil. We've also got pea, which is another legume, and vetch, which is another legume. So these are all adding nitrogen to the soil when we do eventually terminate the crop. Uh, we've got things like daikon radish. Daikon radish is a really long radish and that's going to help send down that big taproot and open up those compact soils. Um, now this, what's really special about this blend is that also it's a pollinator cover crop. So this, when it starts to flower, is going to bring in those pollinators, those beneficial insects, those predatory insects. So if you've got a veggie garden at home, this is a really beautiful cover crop to run to help bring those beneficial insects in. We've got lupins, we've got uh, facilia, which is a really beautiful flower. You can see all the clover doing really well in this space. Uh, we've got sunflowers as a dynamic accumulator. So that's again, gonna send down a really big taproot, really great carbon source. And if you are trying to start a little farm, you can use this as a cash crop. So you can use this, you can bunch them and you can sell them. So kind of finding different and alternative ways to um, create an income if that's what you wanted to do in your space. This complete mixture, Rather than being a monoculture of just a singular lawn, we're looking at over 17 to 18 different species in this space. Having those 18 species in the space means that we're in the biodiversity above ground is really feeding into that biodiversity below ground. And we want that biodiversity because that's going to increase soil fertility. Once we increase that soil fertility, that's where we're going to start capturing carbon, which is what we want. We want those plants to be working together to help increase soil fertility. And so if you've got a space that you might have a bit of time that you want to work on and improve that soil before you plant into it, then this is a really great way to do that. So that's a patch that we haven't had a chance to run a cover crop through. And so as you can see, it looks hot, it looks arid. If we get a heavy downpour, all of that topsoil is just gonna come off. And so it's really important that I do get my act together and run a cover crop on that space so that we don't get that. So thank you for following along. If you have a few acres of land, it doesn't need to be a lot. And you're looking at ways that you can increase soil fertility, help with erosion and start prepping your area if you did wanna start a food forest or something along those lines, I highly recommend running a multi-species cover crop through that space like we've done here and so it was really easy cost effective and a really great way to improve soil fertility um, and ensuring that we've got the addition of that kino pod to make sure that we're getting that soil fertility really kicking off but we want brassicas legumes grasses cereals and a kino pod thank you very much i hope you've enjoyed listening along and i hope if you've got any questions or any feedback please leave a comment down below um, i'd love to hear your cover crop mix if you've got one too and yeah like and subscribe. We'll see you in the next in the next video.